Hello, and welcome back to another pen talk. As you know from an earlier video, a few videos ago, I did a vintage Italian pen and dedicated the video to uh, Wasky Squirrel. And this one is also going to be dedicated to Wasky Squirrel because he motivated me to do another vintage restoration video. Um, I have uh, a tremendous number of vintage pens that I collected back in the 70s when you could buy them for a buck or less. And I did buy a lot of combo pens, which are fountain pen and, and pencil combinations. I was looking for a Packard one because in another video I will have some Packard pens. But when I saw this one, it, it struck me that it needed to be restored and it needed to be put into writing condition. It's a banker. A lot of my combos are new bankers. So whether this is related to them or not, I don't know. I'll do some more research. I like this nice filigree cap band, you know, different material on the other side of it. And I just think this uh, red and gold celluloid or whatever type of plastic it is, I think it'll clean up really nicely. So I think this pen will look really stupendous when it's finally restored. So we probably need to talk about restorations versus repairing. I tend to call what I do with a vintage pen is a restoration, but it, I call it a mild restoration. I don't attempt to return the pen to an as new condition, even if that was possible. But I do think a pen should be brought back to a condition which is representative of its age and also representative of what it may have looked like when it was new. Uh, this is the pencil end. I may or may not have a, an eraser that will fit in that. I do have a number of them. You know, this uh, brass insert here is nice with threads on it. I haven't even tested whether the lead goes in and out, and it does, so that's fine. I don't have to worry about fixing that. Uh, this nib and feed are kind of wonky, so I'll probably pop them out. Um, I'll try to get this original steel nib to kind of work. This also has what I like. The original rubber sack is still adhered to the end of the section. And if you look inside the barrel, uh, I'll have to put a light on it. You'll see that the old sack is still there, so I'm not going to move the lever. And no one probably has because that lever sometimes gets bent or misshapen when people try to use it with a calcified or solidified or whatever term you want to use when the sack is no longer pliable that's inside the barrel. I've reduced the ambient light so we can take a look inside the barrel. So this is the end where you can see that J bar inside there and you can see those little um, attachments for the lever box kind of reminiscent of a waterman but those feet are in a little different spot. If you turn it around to where the section comes in, we can see that calcified, fossilized, ossified, whatever term you want to use, sack that's in there that I'll need to remove. So this pen should be able to restore pretty well. And that's one reason why it's here, because I was able to take it apart. And you're seeing it apart rather than in the assembled condition, because I'm not putting it back together again until I do my restorations. And then you'll get to see it and I'll take you through the steps of the restoration. Let's take a look inside the cap. And we can see it's probably made from a sheet of resin. And there's no liner in there. You can hopefully make out the fact that the attachments of the clip is visible inside there. So it's probably not going to seal up very well to keep the nib from drying out. But we'll clean out the cap. There's some dried up ink in there. You may ask. Chris, how many combos do you have? And this is about a quarter of them. But these are the ones that I brought out to put in this particular tray so I could admire them and depend upon whether I wanted to try to restore them. So these have, these three here are the big red ones. And the one on the far left was one that I saw. Now the one in the middle, not one of them, I saw in an antique store window in New York City one time and I said I got to have it because it looks like a combo big red. 
These next three are New Banker, which apparently is related to the Banker one that, that I was restoring. Three amazing celluloids there. Really nice. I'm glad that I was able to get those three in those three different colors. It also comes with a streamlined pointy top. Here we have some other ones. Interesting names. Of course, the wherever black one is very familiar. And then this blue striped one at the end is a park row. But all in all, just amazed about the amount of colors, the variety. You know, these were substantial pens and probably not inexpensive in their day. And people wanted to be able to carry two writing instruments at one, four, six, nine. And here's another group of combos. Amazing variety, you know, just amazing. You know, someday I'll get motivated and start restoring these, but they're tier three. Um, I don't think any of them really have excellent nibs on them, but they certainly would make an interesting storyline and no name brands. I do have one Schaefer Duo, which is in the uh, ivory and black color, but these are all tier three, no name types of pens. Hopefully you're enjoying this amazing variety that was probably done, most all of these in about 1930. Here we can see the sack has fallen out. Certainly long past its best used on date. I'm going to start with the cap. I'm going to try to remove the dirt oxidation bring back the luster that was in this plastic to begin with. I'm going to start with this. Sometimes I use my polishing pads, but in this case I think I want something that's going to remove a little bit more. So we basically just take it out. These are little polishing pads I make out of sh out of paper shop towels. You can get a roll for a couple bucks in um, auto stores, things like that. I just smear a little bit on here. And then we just rub. So I'm going to do this for a little bit off camera and then show you the results. So I'm very happy with how the cap came out. I'm showing you with this cloth because while I'm doing my polishing, I try to avoid touching anything I'm polishing because I don't want to get any oils or anything on it from my hands. So, yeah, a lot of dirt was removed. A lot of this is tarnished from the brass clip and the brass band. And I also did a final polish with my polishing pads. And this, this band does turn a little bit there, but doesn't bother me. So if you compare before and after, yeah, it's not a, like, in your face difference but it's certainly you can see the gold a lot better in the cap and the metal of the brass certainly polishes up nice and when I'm all done polishing I put this on there's been discussions on on my channel about the use of wax as comes and goes there are a few very well renowned pen restorers that don't use wax but I've been using it for 20 30 years and I've not had any issues with it and to me, without putting wax on, the finish does deteriorate over time, the same way it deteriorated before. You know, this has UV resistance in it and things of that nature. The British Museum uses it, so it's okay with me. So I'm going to continue on that same process with these other two pieces and get them in working order. And then we'll see what we need to do to get the pen functional. For me, this is the tool that every vintage pen restorer needs. So you can put this section over there so it fits nicely and then you find the right punch to use. That's a little bit too big. And yes, I do have a hammer. So we're just going to gently nudge the feet out. 
You can hear it fall down. So there it is. You know, the classic simplistic feed that a lot of vintage pens have. And here's the nib, and as you can see, it's pretty gungy. So I'm going to work on cleaning that up. And, you know, even though the water came out well, obviously we need to do something to get rid of all that ink that's been in there for decades. Now that we've uh, cleaned up the nib and feed, and I'll show you that in a minute, we need to get off the sack that's adhered to the back of this section. That's where I use my trusty scalpel. You know, these have replacement blades, they work well. You know, just have to be careful with any tool that you use. You just kind of chip away at it. It, it falls off. You got to be careful not to gouge into the end of that section because you want to have a nice surface to put your replacement sack on. So we're going to do this for a while, clean that all, all the way up, and then we'll show you the nib and feed, and then we'll put a sack on it and see how that interesting nib writes. Here we are ready for the final phase. This cleaned up fairly well. You know, I used the scalpel and then I used some different abrasive papers to clean that up. The nib was a real challenge. The ink has attacked the plating on it. This looks like plated steel versus stainless steel, which wouldn't have any plating on it. I cleaned it as well as I could. You know, that's a strange... It's not really tipping material, it's just they stamped kind of something on the end of that nib. So we're going to put it in the feed and check it out. I had to clean off the feed because bits of the nib had adhered to the feed. So the channel looks good. You know, it's not perfect. The camera does bring out a lot. Interesting to see how the LED light brings out the depth of the resin, the translucency. You can see how that top of that cat finial was formed. It's just a sheet that's been formed around. That was a process that a lot of tier three manufacturers used. I think some of the Schaefer balances were done that way. Um, the barrels of pelicans that have the stripes were done this way. So a technique that survived the ages. So one of the things is sizing a sack, and I have my own methodologies. I size it based on the inside diameter of the barrel. So I try to get a, a good size sack that just fits in and out. And then I want the length to be something that will attach to the end of that section. So this is a 22 sack, which is the largest sack that I have that I buy them by numbers. And I used, I only had two of them, so I used one of two. So hopefully the pen is worthwhile for that investment. So the Banker is a big pen, a big pen in, in all aspects, length and girth. Here it is compared to a new Ahab and the Pelican M800. It is much longer, but then this additional writing piece, the pencil, adds to that. I decided to use this sink. I haven't used it for a while. I bought a bunch of these little bottles. Trust me, it wasn't easy to fill the pen in this bottle. It's not really practical. You got to kind of tilt it and do some gymnastics, but I did get some ink into the pen, so that was good, and, and the color's nice. So we'll give you some dimensions for the pen. And I'm caps in a little over two turns, which is not typical, but then these threads are in good shape. And it's actually quite pleasant to hold in the hand. The weight here of the pencil doesn't really detract. It's still a decent balance. And for those that love to post and maybe get rid of that pencil on the end, yes, it does post, and it makes for a very long, long pen. 
over six and a half inches long. It does look pretty though. So now's the the real test, and I'll write with it unposted. I mean, this is a very fine line, and I worked a lot on this nib to get it to write. It was extremely scratchy. It was difficult to align those tines without any tipping material on it. You're really writing with a, the end of a piece of steel. So this is as good as it's going to get. It's not a pen that wows me at all. No wow. Um, that's one of the reasons why those combos that you saw were unrestored because the nibs are mediocre. I have restored some which I've done videos on where the nibs were nice, like the southern one, southern pen. But I just saw this, liked the color, and just wanted to work on it. I get motivated, you know, and the vintage that I have just sometimes calls out to me and says, restore me, restore me. So I did. I'm not going to rank this. Uh, well, let, let me rank this as far as a combo does. So this is a combo ranking. So I would put it at a 7.8. You know, it's it's ergonomically fine, but the nib really, I can't do any more than that with the nib. And you might ask, does the pencil work? And the pencil works fine. Some of the combos, the pencils or leads are hung up or they require some work, and I'm not a gentleman to fix a lot of those things, but this one is in very functional order. So we've reached the end, so thank you for watching. Yeah, some strokes this nib just catches on the paper. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little view of a style of pen that was very, very popular in the 1930s, and they still make them occasionally. But um, I think their popularity has certainly waned. Oh, I had to change the battery in the camera. They do run out. So again, thank you for watching. We've reached the end of this video. There'll be more to come. Stay tuned. Until next time, bye for now. Fine nib. <laughs>